This episode is sponsored by BetterHelp, an online therapy platform. Is something interfering with your happiness or preventing you from achieving your goals? If you're regular on my channel, then you know I've been open about my struggles with depression and anxiety. And while therapy certainly helped with that, it also helped in more surprising ways like setting goals that are aligned with what I want to achieve. That's why I'm excited to partner with BetterHelp to support their mission to make therapy more affordable and accessible. I know firsthand that finding a therapist you like that fits your budget and has availability is no easy feat even in a metropolitan area. Thankfully, BetterHelp's online and remote platform makes it easy to find and try new therapists until you land on one that you connect with. So if you're looking for mental health support or you just need someone to talk to in 2024, check out the link in my description. It's betterhelp.com slash bavish to get 10% off your first month. Using that link supports this channel and BetterHelp can connect you with a therapist to see if it can help you. That's Gretchen Wieners. She's totally rich because her dad invented toaster strudel. I don't think my father, the inventor of toaster strudel, would be too pleased to hear about this. Irregardless, I don't think your grandfather, the inventor of toaster strudel, would be too pleased to hear you using that tone with me. Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to Binging with Babish, where this week I'm using its mere mention in Mean Girls as an excuse to make my favorite breakfast from childhood, Toaster Strudels. Also, fun fact, this guy right here, that's Eddie Liu, a very talented actor, one of my closest friends, and my roommate from college. Anyway, let's get down to the business of toasting our strudels, starting of course with the stuff from the freezer aisle. I'm following the package recommendations, toasting one to two cycles on a low to medium setting, grabbing while still a little too hot for my delicate human fingers, and decorating with a flourish of loose runny icing. But the way I did it when I was a kid was to microwave it for 30 seconds, sending it instead through the toaster oven, which at least in my adolescent mind made them come out flakier and toastier. And these are every bit as delicious as I remember them being. So to justify a homemade version, we're going to have to make them pretty damn good. Let's start with the most obvious move, some store-bought puff pastry. Thawed and rolled out per package instructions and cut into toaster strudel-sized rectangles. Then for filling, the easiest candidate is some store-bought blueberry jam. Applying an excessively reasonable strip in the center of each rectangle, brushing down the edges with a beaten egg, and slowly draping another rectangle of dough over top to minimize air pockets. Press firmly to adhere, and then we're going to move things over to a parchment paper lined rim baking sheet, and crimp very securely with a fork, trimming off the edges to neaten things up and to re-emphasize the seal. Then these guys are headed into the fridge for about 30 minutes before baking. As with virtually any pastry, we want things to be as cold as possible. Then we're brushing down their exteriors with that beaten egg, and because I'm pretty sure these are going to explode, as a test, I'm going to punch some little vents in two of these pastries. We got a lot of liquidy filling, and when it gets hot, it's going to want somewhere to go. After about 15 minutes in a preheated 375 degree Fahrenheit oven, two of them exploded. One vented, one unvented, so the fault lies in the security of my crimps. Remember kids, crimp with conviction. Once cooled but still warm, we're frosting with a simple mixture of powdered sugar and heavy cream. And these are perfectly delicious, but they're more strudel than toaster strudel. They've got big cavernous pockets of air between each layer, and there's nothing convenient or grab and go about them. And most importantly, they certainly wouldn't fit in a toaster. So before we get into form factor, let's start with some homemade fillings. I got three honey crisp apples here, but you can use any good baking apple. Then you can peel, core, and chop, or you can just shred it on the large holes of the box grater. We want a nice fine texture so you're not pulling out slices of apples with every bite. We're cooking these apples in about a tablespoon of melted butter along with the juice of one lemon, two ounces of dark brown sugar, and one and a half ounces of honey for our sweetness, letting that cook together for about five minutes before adding two ounces of finely chopped candied ginger. Then for additional flavor bonus points, I'm going to add a little splash of whiskey, plus a quarter teaspoon of kosher salt, half teaspoon of ground cinnamon, and three quarters of a teaspoon of ground cardamom, letting that cook for anywhere from 10 to 30 minutes until the apples are nice and soft and most of the liquid has evaporated. A less juicy filling is going to help prevent blowouts. Next up, I'm going to make a strawberry basil filling, first blanching a half dozen basil leaves for about 10 seconds before dumping in an ice bath, then combining 14 ounces of finely chopped strawberries, our blanched basil finely chopped, the juice of one lemon, two and a half ounces of granulated sugar, and a quarter teaspoon of kosher salt, Bring it up to a simmer and cooking for 15 to 20 minutes until nice and thick and jammy. Now this filling is considerably gooier than the apple stuff, so I'm going to lightly strain it, pressing about a half cup's worth of the liquids through a fine mesh sieve, reserving for delicious use later on. Last up, my personal favorite, blueberry. I'm going with 10 ounces of frozen wild blueberries because they're nice and small, two and a half ounces of granulated sugar, the requisite juice of one lemon, and to class things up a little, I'm going to add two ounces of finely chopped dried apricot. 
shots, plus a quarter teaspoon of salt and one teaspoon of sumac. Bring up to a simmer and cooking for anywhere from 10 to 20 minutes until things get thick and almost pasty, a perfect filling for our strudel. Now onto the pastry. I'm gonna start with two and three quarter ounces of all-purpose flour in the bowl of a stand mixer, adding a half teaspoon of kosher salt and one tablespoon of granulated sugar, whisking until combined and then cubing up 12 ounces or three sticks of cold unsalted butter. Luckily, as we learned from the movie, butter is not a carb. Add that to the flour, a fixed paddle attachment, and run the mixer on medium low speed for about two minutes until the butter is broken up into pieces about the size of large blueberries. If you don't have a stand mixer, you could also do this by breaking up the butter between your fingers. Now we're going to add six and a half ounces of sour cream, mixing on low speed for about one minute until a shaggy dough forms. Turning it out onto a countertop, adding a little bit more flour if it feels too wet, adjusting the focus so the audience can see what you're doing, and gently folding together until no dry patches remain. This cheater's puff pastry isn't going to puff up as much as the real stuff, so I think it's going to be more viable as a toaster strudel. Wrap tightly in plastic wrap and fridge for 30 minutes to one hour. Lightly flour your work surface, and now to make the pastry flaky, we must engage in the time-honored tradition of lamination. That is, we're going to roll the dough out to a roughly 8 by 12 inch rectangle and fold it into thirds like a pamphlet, rotating it 90 degrees and repeating the process two more times. You should end up with a more cohesive, workable piece of dough that is positively stacked with layers of butter. Wrap in fridge for another 30 minutes before rolling out and baking. I'm going to divide this in half for easier workability. If you look closely, you can see little flecks of butter layered throughout the strata of the pastry. Now to roll it out and press some dimples into the dough, this should make it more workable and prevent cracking, and try to get it down to about an eighth of an inch thick. This dough was fighting me a little, so I'm going to place it in the fridge for about 15 minutes, allowing the gluten to relax and making things a little more pliable. Don't go any longer than 15 minutes, otherwise you're going to be fighting hard butter instead of gluten. Now, just like last time, I'm cutting off the edges into a neat rectangle and using a ruler to evenly divide it into six sub-rectangles, enough to make three pastries, one with each of our bespoke fillings. You can make these larger or smaller depending on your preference and general dexterity. Same procedure as before, brush down the edges with egg yolk, crimp with conviction, and trim off the edges. Back into the fridge for 30 minutes, then once nice and chilled, brush down thoroughly with beaten egg. Then these guys are headed into a preheated 400 degree Fahrenheit oven for 20 to 25 minutes until puffed and golden brown. Now if you ask me, and you're asking me, those are some homemade toaster strudels. Let them cool in the pan for about 10 minutes before, oh my god, I forgot the frosting. General procedure here is just to add heavy cream to powdered sugar until you get a nice drizzleable frosting, but now I'm going to make various flavors for our various fillings. For the apple, I'm going to add a teaspoon of vanilla paste and about a quarter butter knife's worth of cinnamon. For a vanilla cinnamon frosting so good, you won't be able to stop dipping your pinky in it. Now when the movie came out, they made toaster strudels with special edition pink frosting. To imitate that, we're simply combining our strawberry runoff and powdered sugar. For the blueberry, I'm going with powdered sugar and lemon juice, colored with a little bit of food coloring to make it more well, blue. Frost as appropriate per the pastry filling, and there you have it, the way toaster strudels always looked in my mind's eye. Golden brown pastry and a picture-perfect squiggle of frosting. But how do they taste and function? Let's take a look at a cross-section here. I was worried that I made the filling too thick, but it was just right. Nice and gooey without flowing out or exploding out the side of the pastry. And it was almost flakier than the puff pastry dough, more like pie dough than pie. Puff. And while the apple and strawberry were delicious, my favorite remains as in childhood, blueberry. But the fact is that these are not toaster strudels until they can be made in a toaster. So I made another batch, this time baking for about five minutes less, until puffed and blonde but not golden, allowing to cool completely and then freezing. Now because of their thickness, my adolescent microwave method actually works best, nuking for 30 seconds before toasting until golden brown. As you can see, it came out a little dark, I think that's because I initially overbaked them in the oven. I also think that it would help to omit the the egg wash if you plan on freezing and reheating these. So there you have it, our three iterations of toaster strudel. The store-bought original remains near and dear to my heart, but at the time of this recording, there are still some left in the freezer. Meanwhile, the crew and I ate every single one of the homemade ones. So I think that qualifies these for a clean plate club equivalency. Thank you again to BetterHelp for sponsoring this episode. Go to the link in the video description to get 10% off your first month. That link is betterhelp.com slash babish. 